I think that um, the 21st century student is not the 20th century student. And with that, while some students still want that physical on campus, live in the dorm, college experience, there's a much broader uh, population of students that don't want that or are seeking alternatives and they want to be able to have an innovative sort of educational experience. The classroom lecture kind of experience is, is more of a 20th century model. And in this 21st century model, whether it's blended or it's fully online, whether it's using MOOCs, there's, there's a variety of different kinds of innovative ways that online learning is changing the experience of learning and changing the experience of education and that students want to be part of that change and that innovation and they, they connect with each other differently. They're using online tools and technology in all kinds of exciting and creative ways. And that's really going to inform sort of the face of education, I think, as we move you know, further into the 21st century. So yes, public uh, universities are the, the largest percentage of uh, students, but the um, for-profit private sector and the non-for-profit private sector, um, the, definitely the for-profit private sector has grown immensely in the last 10 or 15 years. We have the University of Phoenix online, it's kind of the, uh, I guess, main leader of uh, for-profit private education. They have almost 300,000 students and they only began in the early mid-90s um, and have been kind of the leader for um, you know, adoption of online learning. Um, but the uh, for-profit online colleges sort of have tapped into a, a market that didn't really exist. They uh, sort of outside the mainstream. Students maybe from the military or students that uh, wouldn't have gravitated towards higher education, perhaps lacked some certain, uh, you know, academic histories that would have granted them access to public colleges and universities. So over time, they've gained quite a large amount of students. Okay. And in such, that sort of put pressure back on the existing you know, brick and mortar yeah. traditional campuses okay. from the elite of the elite, Harvard, down to some you know, smaller and mid-range colleges, even where I'm from, the University at Albany, part of the SUNY system, we're feeling this sort of strain um, Part of this has been motivated by loss of state funding. Uh, at the year 2000, 70% of college operating costs were funded by states, uh, from state subsidies. That has now dropped to about 35% of college operating costs. So that's a big gap to make up, and one of the reasons why tuition dollars have exp gone up so much but then that's led to higher student debts and it's coupled with you know, credit card debt and other economic issues that uh, may be occurring here in this country. So how can colleges remain in operation if there's only so many tuition dollars you can get out of the existing student populations? Each college sort of has a, uh, a maximum number of students that they can support with their you know, physical infrastructure that's kind of motivated the uh, adoption and looking into online degree programs and offerings and how to tap into online students that maybe are not the traditional students that would be typically filling classrooms and physical campuses. Um, I, we'd like to look at maybe um, percentages of exclusively online students in comparison to all students at those colleges, looking at um, maybe in, over a few years of more data, what are the revenue streams that those exclusively online programs are bringing in, and is there has the disruption continued in terms of other colleges having to consolidate, close, loss of programming, uh, Georgia, for one, has uh, closed some of their physical campuses, particularly some of their two-year colleges, because they're losing tuition, they're losing students, and with that, uh, they have, you know, forced to kind of condense what they have, but also now they're trying to tap more into this uh, online market to continue to make their, their uh, system viable.
So the purpose of our research was to try to explain what's happening in the, um, uh, the uh, higher education systems in the United States. Online learning is sort of a uh, new impetus. There's, uh, you know, is it broad adoption? Are many colleges adopting online learning? Or is it in a very small subset? And if it is in a only small subset, who is part of that subset and why? What, what could we use to explain what's going on in, in uh, public higher education particularly? I mean, we have uh, for-profit and non-for-profit, uh, other kinds of colleges, but uh, we look specifically at public four and public two-year colleges. The main findings was that uh, the adoption is not uniform, that it's very segmented in a very small population of the campuses. Over half of the exclusively online students are concentrated in less than 10% of physical campuses. So that means a very small number of campuses are taking a majority of the exclusively online students. Now those programs are known, are marketed, word of mouth spreads, other people understand that these are, wow, I can get a degree from the University of Florida, but I can be in you know, Albany, New York, or I can get a degree from University of you know, Arizona State University, a large public university, and I could be in Colorado or Wyoming or, or anywhere. Yeah. Yeah. And it wasn't just these uh, sort of for-profit private colleges that were offering these you know, in, you know, national uh, programs. Mm -hmm. Now these are known, recognized, established public four-year institutions that are seeking these uh, non-traditional yeah. students. Well, I don't think that this knowledge, the, this information that we presented as sort of an initial finding is, is known as much as it could or should be okay. in terms of colleges. And perhaps not understanding how concentrated the students are in these specific institutions, student, the ex other campuses aren't having as much reflection upon, mm. wow, we're losing all of these students. Where are they going? And what's going to happen to us? You know, are we going to be viable in 10 years? What programs are we offering that students are going to continue to come here when they can get those same uh, programs from a larger existing public institution uh, for maybe 75% of the cost because it's exclusively online? And I don't have to drive. I don't have to spend time in the car commuting. I can do the work at night or early in the morning whenever it's convenient based on your you know, work schedule.